Okay. Looks like we have a screen. Um, cool. So main thing I wanted to talk to you, just very briefly, is give my, my personal perception on what I think some of the top themes are for Falcon in 2024. I know a lot of people in this room are actively working on these themes, um, but my hope is um, drive a little bit of collective Filecoin community momentum towards making these themes a reality. Some of this are challenges for you, for the people in this room, to actually help us solve these problems together as an ecosystem or build some awesome momentum and cheerlead behind the amazing humans who are helping make this a reality for the Filecoin ecosystem. Um, but first, I want to highlight some of those awesome themes from last year and the amazing accomplishments um, that happened in the Filecoin ecosystem. Um, so as many people know, um, this kind of three-step uh, overall plan for the Filecoin ecosystem, first build the world's largest decentralized storage network, onboard and safeguard humanity's data, and then bring compute to the data and enable web scale applications. Ton of progress, especially across those uh, steps two and three in the past year. Um, we saw 2 million terabytes of client data stored, uh, 19x in the last 18 months. So just a huge, huge increase in the amount of data. We're now past two exabytes of data stored in Filecoin. Holy crap, I don't think anyone was expecting that we'd be you know, here three and a half years into Filecoin and exabytes of data would be live on the network. That's pretty freaking cool. Um, we still have more left to fill, so we still have work to go. Um, but it's been pretty amazing to see the set of clients that have come and started trusting Filecoin with their uh, dark matter research data or their open science or cancer research data. There's a lot of really amazing kind of public goods archives that are now storing their data from things like the Internet Archive, USC Shoah, um, CERN, um, and you know, exciting new use cases like Solana, which was a, a big topic of conversation over the past month, um, who are also bringing their large-scale um, data to Filecoin. Um, we also saw the FBM launch in March of last year, so we're almost at the one-year anniversary of FBM, but not quite. It's been less than a year, and TVL on FBM is over $450 million USD, growing still a year in at like over 40% month over month, which is pretty insane. We're now at number 19, so top 20 TVL. There's you know, we just were hearing from Jonathan Schwartz and Glyph in the amazing kind of ecosystem enablement that that has brought to Filecoin. All of the folks who are depositing um, fill or, and the storage providers that are then able to borrow fill. It is so much easier to get started as a storage provider today because you don't have to rock up to the network with massive amounts of fill. You can work with a decentralized ecosystem of token holders who are enabling you to participate in large scale storage and secure your data with fill collateral. Um, so that's pretty amazing. That's happened just in under a year um, to grow that sort of ecosystem. Um, there's also a whole ton of different builders in the FBM ecosystem, uh, hundreds of different teams. Um, there's some new exciting launches like SushiSwap and Uniswap recently deployed their DEXs um, on FBM. And you know, maybe the, there's a correlation there between the amount of uh, FBM ecosystem activity that's happening um, and kind of the, the additional ease of use with all of these new applications coming and building um, on FBM. And so, you know, I think huge snaps are, are due for all of the folks. It was a whole ecosystem effort to bring FBM to reality. Uh, lots of builders, lots of block explorers, lots of devs. Um, so big thank you to everyone who was involved in making that happen. It's been massive and I think continues to be a huge enabler for Falcon growth. Okay, so looking forward to this year, um, I know we're a couple months into it, but this is my take on what I think are the three top themes for 2024. And I've, I've tried to gather some things together because otherwise no one can remember more than three things. Um, so theme number one, Filecoin L2s, and specifically L2s that are powering compute over data networks, deep in networks, um, and really exciting new use cases like data storage aggregation, and, and L2s that are harnessing the storage capabilities of Filecoin and extending them and bringing new applications, new capabilities to the Filecoin ecosystem um, and extending it further. I think that's an awesome, super exciting theme. Theme number two, hot, fast Web3 storage layer. I guess this is, says for Filecoin. Filecoin as the hot, fast Web3 storage layer is what I meant to say there. Um, so really focusing on um, enabling Filecoin utility and ease of use for deep in networks, for compute over data networks, um, for Web3 smart contract builders, um, and smoothing that onboarding flow. Um, I think that's a really exciting and important theme for this year. Um, and then number three is around scaling the Filecoin economy. Really exciting new growth in the DeFi space, um, new paid demand, paid storage deals happening in Filecoin, which is 
you know, supporting storage providers and growing their operations as well. Um, and really scaling the demand in Filecoin is also a huge uh, growth driver for the economy and a, a big thing that other DPIN networks are looking to us to pave the path in showing um, really large scale demand and usage um, of these ecosystems, not just supply side growth. Um, so those are my, my take on the first, the top three themes and let's dive into each of them. L2s. Um, so really, I see this as a transcendental shift for Filecoin. We started as this core storage layer enabling folks to store data in Filecoin. With the launch of FVM, we became a platform for builders, for programmable storage, for all types of new applications. Um, and now with uh, IPC, interplanetary consensus, coming to Filecoin, we're enabling and unlocking a whole ecosystem of layer two applications, um, new planetary scale applications that are building on the storage layers of Filecoin and taking it further, bringing in compute use cases, um, bringing in uh, interesting DeFi use cases, bringing in uh, aggregation layers, et cetera. Um, and the first one of those is actually already launched or launching, has announced their mainnet. Congrats to Fluence um, for being the first Filecoin L2 building on interplanetary consensus. You get the, the, the credit for being first, but I expect you will definitely not be the last even in uh, the next couple of months as more and more groups um, are, are building and, and um, scaling this ecosystem. So for folks who aren't familiar with it, interplanetary consensus is a blockchain scaling technology that's really built for large scale applications. Um, it has this kind of hierarchical structure to being able to create application specific subnets. You can even have regional focused subnets where you can have really fast block times. Um, you could even have private subnets where you only enable a subset of nodes to join that subnet and do um, kind of like you know, more private uh, blockchain use cases and then checkpoint state back into the parent while still um, kind of keeping the, the transactions uh, happening in that subnet private, um, which is really interesting, really exciting, because you can also um, optimize these different subnets for different use cases. These are all running FVM. Um, they are enabling you to add your own WASM-based actors into these networks or run your own kind of like specialized uh, built-in actors, um, which is one of the things that Fluence is using. They have a, a specialized Someone should remind me of this. It's like an encryption module, a specific uh, WASM function that for randomness or encryption or something like that. I need to remind myself exactly what it is. Um, but it's kind of like unlocking some new capabilities at an L2 level that aren't available, you know, in in WASM today, or sorry, in, in like EVM today. Um, the, the, okay, here we go. This is the whole purpose of this. Making these subnets tunable means you both get EVM cap capabilities, but you can also bring new capabilities. You could even bring your own new runtimes. FEM was designed as a hypervisor. So if you want to bring Aqua, you want to bring, you know, Solana, you want to bring a JavaScript VM, you can layer those on top of FEM um, and uh, kind of like, you know, optimize your subnet with those different sorts of custom use cases, custom consensus, um, special gas schedules, things like that. Um, I think this is also really, really exciting, especially for heavier use cases and deep in applications that are coming into the Filecoin ecosystem. Um, things like CDNs, indexing engines, more and more compute networks. Fluence you know, is, is the first, but I you know, already know of others that are um, working and optimizing for different parts of the compute landscape. Um, and so I think this is going to be a, a really interesting expansion for Filecoin in terms of the capabilities that our network has um, and that are able to interface and, and upgrade each other. Um, so yeah, excited to see a number of these groups who are in conversations and uh, some of them are prototyping already, um, building on IPC and utilizing um, FVM to come to Filecoin. Um, I also just wanted to give huge snaps. If you weren't already aware, there was like a really exciting launch earlier this week. Um, huge snaps to the Fluence team um, on launching their, their network. Um, and huge snaps, of course, to the IPC team as well in helping power that. I think there's also a really important takeaway from this. The Fluence team is helping set the standard for how L2s and how these networks that are launching in the Filecoin ecosystem can and should give back to public goods funding. Um, so they've devoted, I think, 5% of their token supply towards funding developers who are working on building blocks that have contributed towards the Fluence ecosystem. I think this is awesome. I think this is like 
you know, a, a minimum default that all other L2s should take away as they're bringing their applications to the Filecoin ecosystem. And they should think of it not just as a one-time, you know, looking airdrop to um, token holders or developers who have helped contribute to their success, but also as a recurring and ongoing activity. There was some um, great talks yesterday about designing the Filecoin retro PGF system that we expect to be a recurring program for the entire Filecoin ecosystem. I think all of these wonderful L2 networks can be part of giving back to the immense developer community and ecosystem that's helping power and, and kind of upgrade their success as well. So um, very excited to see uh, Fluence leading the way and in contributing towards uh, those Filecoin public goods. All right. Um, Moving on to the hot, fast Web3 storage layer. Um, so I really think Filecoin is, is demonstrating itself as the storage layer of Web3, where you know, the P2P focuses on networking layer and EVM or EVM compatibility is really kind of the um, kind of like uh, compute layer or, or virtual machine layer um, of Web3. And I think this really is highlighted by some awesome exemplars of groups that have been doing this over the past year. So there was some great work done by the data programs team working with the Solana ecosystem to bring all of Solana chain state to Filecoin. And I think that's a first example of what I hope in 2024 is the default example that we have, you know, 50%. That's a goal. It may be an aggressive goal, but I, you know, I believe in this community um, of Web3 chains who are bringing their chain state to the decentralized storage layer of Web3, which makes sense, which can power all of the decentralized nodes operating in their networks, can power things like RPC APIs or other indexing services. Um, and I think that is a great focus area for us to enable more direct connectivity between the Filecoin storage layer and the many different applications and networks that are proliferating right now, many of which need things like data availability, need things like um, longer term archival storage for their historical chain state. Um, also, some awesome work was done um, by the Textile Tableland team uh, onboarding WeatherXM and their um, uh, you know, deep pin data and storing that on Filecoin as well. And I think it's another great example of working across all of these deep pin networks who have both on-chain data, but also large amounts of off-chain weather data or mapping data or imaging data and helping that have a decentralized storage medium um, that they can use and rely on. Um, and so I think our, our goal and our aim should be scaling these awesome exemplars from 2023 and making them more the canonical standard that we can bring to many, many more um, Web3 projects. And in doing so, I think we will ourselves collaborate more. We will create more kind of like shared narrative between the Filecoin community and these many other um, growing communities. And, and there's a lot of growth there to harness. Like all of Web3 right now, we're getting um, more L2s. We're getting faster block times. We're, we're starting to see a lot more scale happening there. And we need Filecoin to be scaling with that increased adoption. We don't want that going to centralized storage mediums or um, non-robust you know, individual participants who are trying to you know, have heavier and heavier archival nodes that are um, sitting on these proof of stake networks. Um, so to highlight a couple of the groups that are involved in making this happen, um, there's the data programs team, which works across Singularity and Spade um, that we're working on kind of that uh, Solana chain state archival. Um, there's the work of Textile Basin, which is doing kind of decentralized object storage. They did kind of a proof of concept with WeatherXM and are working on scaling that in conjunction with IPC, which is really exciting. Um, there was a, some great talks about that earlier today at the um, proof of data summit. Um, there's some cool work that, you know, this is the only slide I have on this because it's, it's still early days, but um, decentralized Web3 storage or the W3S team um, that's combining some of the um, amazing skill sets between Web3 storage and Saturn um, focusing on this area. Um, there's some really interesting new building blocks um, that Station has been bringing to the ecosystem so that these, these new kind of hot, fast storage layers can be measuring reliably the retrievability of their data in Filecoin utilizing the Spark protocol um, and being able to test from that what data is being made available, um, how reliably, which storage providers are performing correctly, and this allows you to have a feedback loop between where, where are you storing data in Filecoin L1 um, storage deals and whether or not it's accessible to the, the folks you expect it to be. Um, Lighthouse has also been doing some awesome, awesome work um, around perpetual storage contact 
contracts um, and the um, PODSI um, proof of uh, data or data inclusion proofs. Um, and they have some exciting new work happening as well. Um, and so they are, I think, probably doing the best job of, of targeting that you know, FVM smart contract builder market and enabling them to use hot, fast storage um, in Filecoin and make it very accessible. Um, and then, of course, Banyan just um, opened their open beta, so you can go and try out Banyan. Um, so snaps to them, and congrats to, to Claudia and team. Um, and that has a super simple and easy to use um, API for getting started with Filecoin. There's also many more. So call out, this was what I could put together in the last 20 minutes while I was making my slides. I apologize if I did not include you here. Uh, mea culpa, please let me know and I will add you to this because I'm giving this talk again tomorrow. So um, uh, perfect, and, and I think we do need more. There, there's a wide space here. There's a lot of optimization needed and partnership work needed to collaborate effectively across the entire Web3 ecosystem. Um, having one or two teams going after all of you know Celestia and Avail and um, Polkadot and and all of these Web3 ecosystems that takes time it takes energy and I think the um, you know more energy needed helping connect the dots here and uh, making Filecoin the core foundational layer of all of Web3. Last but not least um, is around scaling the Filecoin economy um, with DeFi and paid deals um, in demand. Some of you might have been at some of the previous PhilDev summits where we've talked about the, the flows of the overall Filecoin economy, um, where we want to be exporting more value, um, selling storage, selling um, block space, um, selling our, our exports as an economy. We want to be importing less, aka having to spend less on our OPEX as an ecosystem. And then we want to be increasing the amount of internal business that is happening inside the Filecoin economy. So exporting, we are exporting paid storage deals, actually, sorry, exporting paid storage deals and applications that people want to use. Um, this is growing our overall um, kind of like utility, um, lowering imports, reducing SP costs, making ourselves more efficient as an ecosystem, and then increasing internal businesses, helping the um, you know, amount of transactions that are happening within the Filecoin economy, the DeFi um, ecosystem that's able to kind of um, you know, be increasing there, and then the kind of like within ecosystem heavier workloads that are happening. Um, so three things to highlight within that. There's a lot of work right now um, reducing network-wide OPEX. There's a uh, kind of network upgrade happening, I think, later in March, um, where there's some significant improvements to lowering storage provider OPEX, um, which can translate to less uh, demand to sell fill in order to pay for the day-to-day -day, um, overhead of being a storage provider. Um, there's also significant cost savings that are in the works and request we need feedback loops as a community to make sure that we're prioritizing the most impactful changes here. So there's um, snap deals um, and aggregate snap deals, which you know, reduces gas costs of onboarding data quickly into the Filecoin economy. There's being able to re-snap sectors. So if you want to do things like data deletion or updating and having kind of mutable data in Filecoin, that's what re-snap would unlock. I know Banyan and Claudia's team have been like, we want to be able to have you know, little data deletion inside Filecoin. There's um, the the NI POEP project, um, non-interactive POEP, which removes an entire proof commit step. Right now there's two proof commit steps to bring new data into the Filecoin ecosystem. This would simplify it to one. It's a little bit more compute heavy, but it reduces some of your um, kind of like time to bring new sectors into Filecoin. Um, feedback, very welcome on that. How, how much of an improvement is it? Should we spend the time? We have to write new circuits for that. It's, a little bit more uh, heavy work to make that sort of improvement. So um, there's a lot of really good ideas. We're just prioritizing between which we bring to market when. Um, in terms of onboarding new paying users, we're seeing paying Filecoin storage deals starting to become the standard. There's a lot of work that the Phil Store team is doing to um, onboard high paying customers who are um, looking for um, larger scale, you know, petabyte scale deals uh, for enterprise storage data. And that's pretty exciting and I think a, a great opportunity for us as an economy to be bringing in more value, more paid demand for our services, which is great. Um, I think the Spark retrieval metrics help with this a lot as well, because one of the things that many enterprise or large scale customers want is uh, to understand what sort of retrieval guarantees they have as well. And some of the, the building blocks are there for um, storage providers to be monitoring that and surfacing um, to those clients what sort of uh, retrieval metrics they support. 
Um, and then finally, in terms of increasing the amount of activity happening in the Filecoin economy, um, we have new DeFi DEXs that are live on Filecoin, which is pretty cool. Um, and we have Fast Finality, um, this F3 project coming to Filecoin in Q2, um, which un unlocks much faster bridging, much faster transaction confirmations. You saw Jonathan up here before being like, okay, let's wait for this to like land in this. Um, F3 would give you kind of sub block level um, uh, kind of checkpointing so that you could have uh, much faster transactions for the user, which increases the number of transactions people are, are usually wanting to do because they much get a much faster feedback loop. Um, and so that is a, another way of bringing more um, kind of like activity into the Filecoin economy. Um, so anyways, these are what I think are the three main themes for 2024. Um, if you have other ones, come let me know. I'd love to hear what you think are the top themes. Um, and I'm excited to build Filecoin and make it better together with all of you. So thanks for being a part of this amazing community. And keep going. Thank you, thank you. Well, that was awesome. So we're going to have a couple minutes now to do an AMA with Juan. Um, not too much.